Section 2. Listen to a tour guide giving information to a group of tourists who are visiting Speak Hall. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 15. Listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 15. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Can I have everyone's attention? Good. Thank you. OK. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Speak Hall. My name is Wayne and it's my pleasure to show you around our magnificent building today. Now, I'll start by telling you a little bit about the history of Speak Hall, and then we can move inside and have a look around. OK, well, as many of you may know, Speak Hall is famous for being probably the finest half-timbered Tudor mansion in England. Now, we're standing here in the courtyard, and as you can see as you look towards the main entrance of the building, the walls are covered in magnificent black and white timbers. The hall was built between 1490 and 1612, with this, the southern side of the hall, being the oldest section. It was originally called Speck Manor, Speck being the old English word for brushwood. For most of its history, Speck Hall was owned by the Norris family, and they were responsible for most of the building that you can see today. However, during the 18th century, the Norris family fell upon hard times, and the house fell into disrepair and was almost destroyed. In 1795, the house was bought by Richard Watt, a wealthy merchant from nearby Liverpool. Although Watt never actually lived there, he was responsible for saving Speak Hall, and for starting the restoration work on the house, which was continued by both his son and, later, his grandson. In 1943, the house was put under the care of the National Trust, who are still responsible for looking after Speak Hall today. Before you hear the rest of the speech, you have some time to look at questions 16 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 16 to 20. Now, I know that you are all keen to get inside, but just before we enter the house, I'd like to quickly tell you about some of the main rooms inside. In a moment, we will pass through the small dining room. The walls of this room are covered in wood panels, and the room contains many valuable sketches and paintings of Speak Hall. Nearby is the billiard room or games room. This was built in around 1550 and was originally a kitchen, but was changed to a games room used for snooker and billiards in the 1860s. Leading off from the games room is the library. This room was badly damaged during the 18th century and has been completely restored. The shelves contain many rare and valuable books on themes such as estate management, religion, as well as novels. If you walk through the library, you will come to the gun room. This is quite a small room, and records show that in 1624, this room was actually used as a storeroom, but it may also have been used as a chapel earlier. 
The most famous room in the house is the Great Hall, built in 1530 by Sir William Norris. This room would have been used as a banquet hall during the 16th and 17th centuries and has been restored with furniture from that period. The large window at the end of the hall contains stained glass taken from a local church and dates back almost 500 years. Now, later we will move upstairs and I'll tell you a little about the bedrooms. But for now, if you can follow me and we'll go into the house and take a look at the first room. That is the end of section two. You now have half a minute to check your answers.